Good morning. I'm uh, Eric Roselli. I'm the director of the Aortic Center at the Cleveland Clinic, and I'm happy to share with you a paper that we just presented at the uh, 99th Annual American Association for Thoracic Surgery meeting in Baltimore. So uh, the title of the study is, What is the Risk of Adding Aortic Replacement to Cardiac Surgery? Jay Idris, a research fellow, did uh, much of this work and presented this in Baltimore, and I want to share uh, some of the slides and information that we shared with that audience with you today. What we're seeing in the practice of cardiac surgery in our institution, and I think this is true in many places as well, is that more and more patients coming to cardiac surgery are more complicated with complex, uh, multi requiring multi-component operations involving valves, coronary arteries, uh, arrhythmia surgery, and they often also have ascending aortic disease associated with that. And so the question often is, how many components of an operation are too many? Or when it comes to that ascending aorta, is it okay to go ahead and fix it while we're there versus waiting uh, for later degeneration? So we wanted to understand that a little better. We previously uh, looked closely at our ascending aortic elective surgery patients and have built a very robust database um, understanding that uh, although so much is written about aortic disease in emergency situations, very little has been written about it in elective situation. And we have found that the, the, these operations are really safe. In patients undergoing isolated ascending repair, the risk of death was less than one half a percent. In patients who are undergoing uh, op multi-component operations that involve the ascending aorta, the risk of death was just a little over two percent. So we looked again at that data in a different way to ask this question. Does adding that replacement increase the surgical risk? We wanted to characterize those patients and uh, determine that risk by performing a series of comparisons. And so over a five-year period of time, uh, which included over 14,000 patients undergoing elective cardiac surgery at our institution, we found uh, nearly 1,700 had undergone multi-component operations that included ascending aorta replacement, uh, and then the other 12,000 that underwent um, cardiac surgery without ascending aorta replacement as our two main groups that we compared first. We found that there were some differences in these patients about the kind of operations they went, not surprisingly. Patients undergoing uh, aortic operations more often had disease involving their a uh, aortic valve, um, and um, patients requiring other cardiac surgeries more often required coronary bypass surgery. Uh, but there were plenty of patients within this group that we could match. And so we matched uh, 1,284 pairs out of this large population of over 14,000 patients. And when we compared them, we found that there was no difference in mortality or stroke or several other complications, at least not significantly different, in these groups. There was, uh, however, uh, a slight increased risk of stroke in the aorta population. So we looked closer at that population and said, why is the stroke risk higher in these folks? And what we didn't do in the initial match was uh, differentiate the use of circulatory arrest, which we know uh, can be an important risk factor or maybe a marker for more complex disease. When we looked at within that matched group of patients undergoing aortic replacement and differentiated those with and without circulatory arrest, not surprisingly, we saw actually the risk of death and stroke was higher in the circ arrest group and stayed low in the other population of patients, remarkably low at 1% and less than 1% for death and stroke. But that raises the question, is circulatory arrest itself a bad thing? Uh, certainly we know that we use that all the time to save people and allow us to perform complex operations. Or is it just a marker of a subset of people who are at higher risk? And so we did another match, another analysis, looking closer at the use of circulatory arrest. Because we know that when we use circulatory arrest, uh, in some instances, is because we have no other way of fixing a problem uh, and then in some instances, it's sort of a surgeon's choice or technical choice, not necessarily a patient-related factor. And so within that subset of patients uh, who uh, had circa arrest, 728 of them, we did an additional match. We matched those patients to the ones that had no circa arrest, and we were able to find 
342 like pairs. Within those 342 patients that were similar, we found that there was no difference in death or stroke when it came to the use of circulatory arrest or not, and these outcomes were excellent with rates under 2%. So circulatory arrest was not the culprit, but probably a marker for patients with more advanced disease. Of course, we didn't match all of those patients. We only matched 324 pairs. And so we took a closer look and did an analysis of those sort of oranges, as you'd say, after we took out the apples to apples bit. The unmatched patients, no surprise, were patients who had more comorbidities, including pulmonary disease, neurovascular disease, uh, porcelain aortas, were more likely to have undergone a redo operation. So it was no surprise to see that. They also had more extensive disease. What One of the remarkable parts of this study, uh, and I give the credit again to Dr. Atrees, who studied uh, and did a detailed three-dimensional analysis of all the CT scans in those nearly 1,700 patients over a five-year period, and we gathered detailed data uh, about uh, the size of the aorta, was that that unmatched group were people with more advanced aortic disease as well. So they had larger arches and larger descending aortas, and that ascending replacement was also often part of an extensive aortic operation. Our outcomes were still excellent in this group, with risk of death and stroke uh, seven, less than 7%. Uh, but they do represent a higher risk population of patients. No surprise, they have really extensive and advanced aortic disease. So we go back to ask this question again. In the matched group of patients that underwent aortic surgery that we pulled out initially, where we found that circulatory arrest was more likely a surgeon's bias and not necessarily a patient-related factor, we compared those 684 patients from that second comparison, again, to our larger group of cardiac surgery patients. And again, we found several pairs across the spectrum, 647 matched pairs, and again ask this question, do they do any different? They do not. The risk of death and stroke was less than 1% in both of those populations of patients. The risk of stroke was in the 1% range. Outstanding. And so to summarize what we did in this very complex study where we asked a difficult question, in a difficult heterogeneous population of patients. We designed uh, using uh, statistical techniques developed by Gene Blackstone and his team, a study where we did three propensity match comparisons of various groups, plus a fourth analysis of those unmatched group of patients with really complex advanced aortic disease. And we found that there was no difference in death or stroke in patients who need the addition of ascending aortic replacement to their multi-component cardiac surgery. That risk was not different. Patients with advanced aortic disease do represent a higher risk population. So how has this changed our practice? Well, it validates our practice, which has been one of being aggressive about treating ascending aortic disease at the time of cardiac surgery. We think that that will uh, ultimately make an important difference in long-term outcomes in our patients because they're not only getting better, safer operations from our cardiovascular surgery group, but they're getting better medical care from our referring cardiologists and medical doctor teams because they can manage hypertension and other chronic problems to keep these people around a long time. And after we get them through some multi-component cardiac surgery, we don't have to have a conversation in six or seven years about that ascending aorta we left behind because we're more aggressive about fixing it when all things are otherwise equal. Thank you for your attention and I hope that sharing this paper with you uh, will help you in uh, uh, guiding your patients in the future and we look forward to collaborating with the cardiovascular community in general to continue to advance our knowledge of taking care of the most complex cardiovascular patients. Thank you.